comes in a very large but basic box. This is a Night Force Model C104. This is their Benchrest 12 to 42 power with a 56 millimeter objective, the NPR2 illuminated reticle. And on the other side of the box, very hard to see, but it says made in Japan. Okay, let's dig in. Well, initially, you got the scope. Comes with these styrofoam end caps to help keep it safe in transport. Got a manual. And a few other little things. Any type of optics, you want to use a cloth design for optics that's not going to damage it to clean it so it's nice that night force included their own little cloth cleaning microfiber thing that's nice came with an allen key i'm guessing that's to adjust the turrets good instruction manual from night force the owner's manual looks like this is Specific to their competition and bench rest models. So that's nice. And check it out. Four stickers. I think I think with any type of optics or firearms, if you're paying more than fifty dollars, just throw in a sticker. It's fun for us to show some brand loyalty and put it on our saves or somewhere else. Uh, I love stickers, but this has four of them. So you get this massive long one, Night Force with the logo. Just the small Night Force. The Night Force logo, and I'm guessing some sort of white one for a window or something. So that's pretty darn cool. I like that. Four stickers. That That's the most I've ever seen. And the scope itself. Looking at the side of the tube, it says Night Force 12 to 42 power by 56. And on the bottom, it says Made in Japan, which is really nice. I was reading some reviews, and somebody actually claimed theirs was made in China. Well, that's not the case for this one. This is Made in Japan. Box says it, and the scope says it. I got this July 2017. Paid about $13.50 for it, so it's not cheap. Definitely not cheap. Scope tube, I would call this kind of uh, semi-gloss black. It's not really matte, and it's not really gloss. It's a uh, semi-gloss. And it feels like most other scope tubes. Smooth, um, very different from the Night Force NXS scopes. Those just feel like nothing else. They feel like solid tanks. This one, it's chunky, feels perfectly sturdy, but not quite the same night force. But nothing wrong with this. At the back here, you have a quick focus eye adjustment for a diopter corrector. And you also have this very nice screw-in lens cap. And I love screw-in lens caps. They're aluminum, very nice, and they screw in. The only thing to be careful with this is when you screw it in and you get all the way in you don't want to go too tight or else you're going to actually start to adjust your diopter it will move it so i just put it on snug it up just the tiniest bit so dust doesn't get in and all set the scope magnification range is actually very smooth not stiff at all but firm enough that you're not going to accidentally move it it has markings indicating 42 times, 35, 30 power, 26, and then R. R is the ranging setting. It corresponds to 22 times because the reticle is a second focal plane reticle. It's a minute of angle style reticle, and it's only accurate at 22 power, which is indicated by the R. 
Then you have 20 times, 18, 16, and 12. Very smooth. Very smooth, very nice. Solid feeling, all metal. The scope has a glass etched reticle. It's minute of angle style, and it is illuminated. So this is the illumination dial. It's currently off, and then you'll hear a click. Now it's on. And it indicates from one all the way till, let's see what we got. One up to 10. But they're not actual clicks. Uh, it's infinitely variable. So if you want to adjust it just the tiniest bit, you can. It's not actual 10 illumination settings. It's infinite. It doesn't get terribly bright. Uh, but it's, I think, acceptable for what it is. And then when you go back on to off, you get a nice little click. It's smooth. This one is stiff, but it works perfectly fine. These are the turrets. They're capped. Target style turrets. No other style came in the box, so this is what you get. And they're beautifully machined. Feels like aluminum. So smooth. They're eighth, one eighth minute of angle turrets, and they're real nice. I don't think anybody's going to complain about these turrets. They have extremely positive clicks, essentially no slop. They're not terribly fine. Uh, there's enough movement between clicks, and very easy to read. Love these. Same thing with the elevation. Unscrew this nice aluminum turret cover. You couldn't ask for anything better, especially in a target scope. Uh, they're perfect. When you screw back the covers, you're screwing down against a rubber washer to help try and keep out water and dust. So that's pretty nice. Here's another angle looking at the turrets. You can see the lines. The turrets perfectly match up the lines with the indications. And depending on what revolution you're on, there's little lines to indicate that. The scope has adjustable parallax, which you would need for a scope of this style. It's an adjustable objective. You grab the whole thing and adjust it. Again, very smooth, not terribly stiff. It indicates below 25. I'm guessing around maybe 20 or even closer. And then you adjust it up. So that's 25, 30, 35. There's a lot of movement at initially for these ranges. 40, 50. Then you start jumping up. Now we get to 75, 100, 200, 300, 400, and infinity. It's a nice system. It works good. At the front of the scope, we have a sunshade. And screwed into the sunshade is another lens cover. Very nicely done. Nice aluminum. I love screwing caps. And then you have, I'd say, roughly two, two and a half inch sunshade. and off that comes nice sunshade um, it has milled recesses uh, still pretty reflective if you can see that you can see how much it reflects light but it's a sunshade nonetheless if you wanted if you don't want to run the sunshade you can directly screw in the lens cap into the objective housing. But be careful you don't cross thread it. There you go. So 
totally up to you whether you want to use the sunshade or not. Let's give you a better look at some of the optics. This is the objective. You can see some green reflection. The lenses are multi anti-reflective coating so you can see green reflecting back there a lot of green and if I point it down this area you can start to see some blue reflecting some multi coated if we go down to the eyepiece you get the same sort of deal so green reflection there along with some blue reflections Let's see if I can pick that up The anti-reflective coatings remind me of some of the older lenses. Um, it reflects back a fair amount of light. It's not, it's not you know, terribly tactical. You will see scope reflection off this scope. Um, but I will say with the sunshade on, uh, I don't really get much glare. So glare is not really a problem anytime I've ever looked through it. Now we're looking behind the scope. The scope is looking at a white piece of paper and what you're seeing right now, the blue stuff, that's reflection coming from the back. If I walk and block off that, okay, now we're still looking through the scope. The scope is currently at the minimum magnification of 12 times and I'm just going to zoom it in. What we're doing here is we're looking for reflections within the tube that create stray light. And so you can see around the edge there is light reflecting within the tube. This is at the maximum magnification of 42 times, but near the actual image itself, not really anything. I'm going to go backwards. Not too bad. Now we're looking through the scope at a white background, and this is what the reticle looks like. It's a second focal plane reticle, so it doesn't change with magnification. We're currently at 12 times. It is correct for ranging at 22 power. Vertically, you have three full minutes of angle, and horizontally, you have four minutes of angle. Currently, the illumination is off. It's looking at a pretty bright background, and I'm going to turn it on and count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten times. This is the illumination setting. It's currently at maximum illumination, and I think you can tell even at max, it's not that bright. This is made for really dim light. If I shut off the ambient lights, now you can start to see the reticle illuminating. And I can turn it down to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 two, one, and then off. And if I shut off all the lights, now it's very dim in here, and I'm going to put the illumination on. I'm increasing it, and there it comes in. Increasing it more, 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 and that's full illumination. The whole reticle illuminates. It's currently dark outside. This is, uh, I, I could never imagine taking a shot even in this light or any darker than this. Uh, the camera magnifies it a lot. So I'm going to look at this little hatch fence. 
illumination is currently off and I'm just going to gently increase it. Click on, increasing it. There it becomes just barely noticeable. Keep going, keep going. Now it's very noticeable. And that's maximum right there. So right around here, whoops, sorry about that. That is an illumination setting of eight. So again, the illumination is not very bright and it's certainly not really daytime bright. Um, but it is enough, especially if you crank it up to 10, it's enough to see the reticle in dark light. And especially against a dark background. Currently at the maximum magnification of 42 times, looking at a house about 70 meters away. This is a door frame of that house. And I'm looking currently at the screen. Now with the reticle being black, against the background that is also black, it might be a little bit hard to see. But this scope has illumination. It's currently off. I'm going to turn it on and go up to the maximum illumination setting of 10. and that's maximum. So I think you can see when it's daytime out eh, the illumination's not very bright. Right now we're looking through the scope at the minimum magnification of 12 times. I have parallax set at 70 yards which these objects are roughly at. Camcorder is set to manual focus and manual brightness. Kind of pan around, you get to see what the image looks like. At 12 times, the image is very flat, not really any blurring on the edges. Biggest complaint I have is that the field of view is relatively small. But this should give you an idea. At 12 times, besides the field of view, it's pretty good. Not the sharpest I've ever seen, but pretty good. And I'm going to just start to zoom in. Okay. This is 16 times. 18 times. 20 times. This is 22 times the ranging setting. 26 times. You can definitely start to see the purple fringing now, big time. 30 times. 35 times. And the last setting, which is maximum, 42 times. When you're not looking at very contrasty objects, it's not terrible. But then when you go to a contrasty object, you really, really notice that purple fringing. Near, well, for most magnifications, you get both purple and green fringing. And then once you start to go above 30, maybe 35 times, it pretty much just becomes purple fringing. I'm going to work my way back down as smooth as I can. And that's a minimum, 12 times. We're currently at 42 times, looking at a very contrasty subject. And you can see the amount of purple fringing we get. 
if I try and slightly move the scope, you can see different levels of purple fringing. And I'm just barely touching it. So uh, I would say it's very noticeable. Let's go down to 30 times. That was maximum at 42. Here's 30. The amount of purple fringing is about the same, but because you're not magnified quite as much, it doesn't look as big, but it's still there. I mean, check that out. Not good. I'm, that's probably the biggest detractor of this scope. It's just the amount of purple fringing. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go down to about 22 or 20 times. Uh, about there. Now, it's not terrible, but you still see it. But not terrible. And all the way down to 12 times. 12 times is actually good. I have no complaints about this optically, except for the lack of field of view. But 12 times is nice. But I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of other scopes that'll do 12 times nice. So what you're buying this for is the higher magnifications. Just keep in mind, when you do go to higher magnifications, you're going to get significant purple fringing. Below about 30 times, you also get green fringing. And after about 30, that goes away and it just becomes all purple. That's what I seem to have noticed. So right here, I don't know if you can notice any green fringing or not. Is it the end of the day? No. You'll still be able to take your shots, but... If you're looking for the best of the best optically, then this is not it. Okay, I'm looking at a house that's about 130 meters away. Currently at 12 times, so the minimum magnification. And you can see the field of view is not too good. This is only 12 times. The field of view is not that great. So there is a door, there's a little flagpole holder, a light, the roof. Uh, let's just work our way up. So I'm going to jump up to 20 times. Okay, that's about 20 times. Okay. I'm going to do another jump up to 30 times. That's about 30 times. The grass. The door. The flagpole holder. I hope you guys can appreciate just how hard it is to keep this still. Uh, it's extremely hard while trying to hold it. And that's just a third time, so let's go all the way up to 42. There's the flagpole holder. The door. The grass. And I don't know what that is. Here I have the scope mounted on a CZ-452 rifle. It's using UTG AccuShock high profile rings. These go from the 11 millimeter dovetail on the rifle to the 30 millimeter tube of the scope. This scope has a 56 millimeter objective, so it was a little bit of a problem mounting it to this rifle. You can see I just barely clear that piece of metal. And again, this is using high profile rings. Because of the large size of the objective and having to use large rings on this style of rifle, you're going to get a very high eye placement. And if you have a regular stock that doesn't have, say, an adjustable cheek piece, uh, it might not work too well for you. This rifle here, I do have an adjustable cheek piece and I'm able to elevate it so that my eye looks straight through the scope, but, you know, Keep that in mind. I think you're really going to want that if you want to get this scope. You have to have some adjustability to get your eye up there. 
when I look through the scope, the first thing that I notice is actually just how small the sight picture is. It's extremely small, relatively speaking, especially for a 30 millimeter tube and a 56 millimeter objective. Very small sight picture. So that was a little bit disappointing. Above about 32 times magnification, the image really starts to degrade. It gets a little washed out, gets dimmer, not very crisp looking, a lot of color fringing. It's still usable, but it's nothing, nothing to brag about. Below 32, it's, it's not terrible. And especially below 25, you don't get a whole lot of color fringing. And it's pretty nice. You know, in conclusion, I don't know what to think about this scope. It does what it's intended, but it doesn't do it spectacularly. And, you know, if you're paying $13.50, $14.50 in the U.S., that's a lot of money. And I would expect pretty top quality. There are other scopes that are much more. This is the older style, their Benchrest. They have a new competition line, which has ED glass. Um, I've heard a lot of people say when they look through both of them, there's not a whole lot of difference, which is surprising to me. Then, of course, there are some Schmidt & Bender Field Target 2s. What else? you got some March scopes. And I'm sure there's others. They're a lot more money, and... Yeah, hey, maybe you do have to pay that amount to get the real top quality optics. Um, you know, I don't know what to think about this. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. It's a lot of money, and it, it does what it says. It just doesn't do it, you know, beautifully. So I don't know. Anyways, I hope this little show and tell was helpful. If you have any questions on this scope that I might be able to answer, feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to get back to you. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye. The Night Force has less field of view and it has quite a bit more purple fringing. The Weaver is fixed at 36 times whereas this one can adjust from 12 up to 42. If you want to dial down because you get a lot of mirage on the Weaver, you can't. You're stuck at 36. Whereas this one, yeah, you can go down to 25, 20, 12 if you want. I thought, okay, well, the Weaver is fixed power. Maybe giving up that variable magnification, I can get similar optics, but for much less. Uh, the Weaver was about $420, whereas the Night Force was about $350. No, 1350. That's a big difference. The Night Force is about three times the price. Both are made in Japan. Uh, the Night Force is much bigger. This is the Hubble Space Telescope. And it feels it in weight. It's about at least twice as heavy. I'm going to put these on the scales and actually see what it comes up as. The Night Force has additional features like illumination, which I like. The turrets on this are different. But they're nice. They both come with screw-in caps, which I really like. The big difference between the Weaver and the Night Force, the Weaver has a very slow turn diopter corrector, and it's lockable. Whereas this is a fast focus, and it's not lockable as far as I can tell when I screw in this lens cover. I don't screw it in very tight because if I do, then I'll actually be turning the diopter corrector. This is a 30 millimeter tube, whereas the Weaver is one inch. So the Night Force is a little bit bigger in the tube. This has less mounting space for rings, but still fairly a lot of room. The Weaver has more. This has a 56 millimeter objective, whereas the Weaver has just a 40. This has slightly better anti-reflective coatings. And because it's a quite a bit larger objective, you let in a little more light. The Night Force looks just a tiny bit brighter, but the biggest difference is in clarity. The colors on the Night Force are so much more vivid. It's night and day. The Weaver, it's like you have a 
like a, a thin sheet of gray paper you're looking through. It's so hazy at times. If you have perfect lighting conditions, it's not terrible. But if you have bad lighting conditions, it's pretty terrible. The Weaver is not illuminated reticle. It's a thin, fine crosshair, which is fine for target shooting. But if you're shooting against dark targets, black targets, very hard to see. The field of view on the Weaver is quite a bit better. The Weaver claims it's a 36 power, and I believe it is. But the field of view would be comparable to this Night Force at about 30 times. That's where the field of view is about the same, so, you know, keep that in mind. The Night Force image is a little bit brighter. The eye box is not as for not as critical on this Night Force. And I think that's just down to a slightly bigger exit pupil size. The eye placement's not as critical. You can move it forward and back a little bit more, left and right a little bit more. The turrets on the Weaver are extremely fine, extremely precise, no slop. They feel like Schmidt and Bender turrets. The turrets on this Night Force are very different. There's large spaces between the clicks. Essentially no slop. But I kind of prefer this one. Uh, the Weaver, it's so fine, you have to be extremely careful counting. Or you have to really look finely. This one, it's much, ob much more obvious. So I like the turrets on this one, and it doesn't really matter, but these are actually machined aluminum turrets. They just, they look real fancy compared to the other ones, which are kind of just painted black with some orange litter. If you have a lot of glare, the Weaver image quality deteriorates fast. You get lots of reflected light, and uh, that's even with the sunshade. This Night Force does a much better job of controlling glare. I don't really notice much problem. The image in the Weaver, it's got a lot of, a lot of stray reflected light close to the image. And that helps contribute to the gray, washed out colors. And, on, and an overall like haze, it's like you're looking through fog most of the times. Compared to this where it's crisp, Vivid, uh, you get a lot of purple fringing. Um, the Night Force is probably just a tiny bit better clarity and sharpness wise. I could have got by with a 36 power fixed if it had similar optics. Um, for about a third of the price, I was really, really hoping it would have worked out, but sadly, it just doesn't do it for me optically, and so I would still much prefer to stick with this, even though it is three times the price.